From the brains behind Brains On, it's Smash Boom Best. The show for people with big opinions. Hi, I'm Molly Bloom, and this is Smash Boom Best, the show where we take two things, smash them together, and ask you to decide which one is best. Today, we've got two animals in the ring. In one corner, we've got skunks, those woodsy, smelly, striped cuties we all wish we could pet. And in the other, sharks, those ancient, bloodthirsty predators that make swimming at the beach just a little bit scary. Which wily creature will win this smash boom battle? Sharks are just better, and they won't even hurt you unless you look like a seal. I think skunks would win, because they can swim but they can also go on land. Skunks, what, what do skunks do? What, uh, they, they fart on you? Come on. I love sharks. Um, I think they get an unfair rep in the media. Skunks are nice too. I believe they're the only animal in Minnesota that you can't legally rehabilitate, which is a little bit sad. So maybe we should be like, for the skunks. Will it be stealthy team shark or stinky team skunk? Henry is here to help us decide. Hi, Henry. Hello. So, Henry, when I say shark, what do you think about? I think of Jaws. Can you tell us what Jaws is about? Jaws is a movie about a shark that eats a bunch of people. I know that. <laughs> so have you ever seen a shark in real life? Um, I've seen the little ones at aquariums, but not any big dangerous ones. Are you afraid of sharks? Are you fond of sharks? How do you feel about sharks? Uh, I feel like if I met a dangerous shark in real life, I'd be afraid of it, but... I like the little ones you can find at aquariums. They're cute. Yeah. And what about skunks? Do you know what a skunk smells like? Have you smelled it in real life? Yeah, a lot. And how would you describe that smell? Very pungent. It's strong. <laughs> it is very pungent. So what pops in your mind when you hear the word skunk? Uh, I think in, I think about driving down to my grandparents' house. I, there's normally you can smell a skunk or two mm. on the way down. Do you already think one is cooler than the other, sharks or skunks? Uh, I think sharks are a little bit cooler, but I could very much see skunks winning. So you're going into this with an open mind. Yeah. Good to know. Well, let's meet our debaters. Here to defend adorable, nocturnal, smelly team skunk is Rachel Ward. Hi, Rachel. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. You are the host of the Chompers podcast. Can you tell us a little about your show? Sure. So Chompers is a show for kids. It is every morning and every night, and it's two minutes long, which is how long dentists say you're supposed to be brushing your teeth. We made Chompers so that you'll always brush your teeth for the right length of time, and you can be entertained while it's happening. Okay. So now, in a single sentence, why are skunks the smash boom best? I think skunks are, are wildly cute, but I also love that they have this built-in smell that makes them even more f desirable because you can't have them. Mm, excellent. And here to represent sharks, those frightful fish that have been swimming our seas for over 400 million years, it's science journalist Wendy Zuckerman. Hi, Wendy. Hello. So, Wendy, you are the creator and host of the podcast Science Versus at Gimlet Media. Can you tell us a bit about your show? Yeah. So Science Versus, as the name suggests, looks at all these ideas and things that are out there in the world, and then we just put them under the scientific microscope. So it could be like a DNA kit that maybe your parents took and found out that they were half German and never knew before. And we ask, like, how real is that? We answer questions like that. Have you ever talked about sharks on the show? We have. Our most recent episode is all about sharks. So, in one sentence, why are sharks cooler than skunks? I mean, how can I choose amongst the stars in the sky? Like, <laughs> all the reasons why sharks are so much cooler than skunks. I mean, they're, like, not even in the same category. A shark <laughs> is awesome and cool and scary and complicated outrageous and a skunk <laughs> like what it's got like like two k's in it like it doesn't even have variety in its <laughs> lettering system oh my gosh it's even getting into the spelling this is going to be an excellent debate let's review the rules of the game round one is the declaration of greatness each side will use facts history and lore to prove that their side is the coolest and they'll each have 30 seconds to rebut their opponent's statement 
Then we've got the micro round, a creative challenge each side has prepared for in advance. They'll use this opportunity to make a splash. Round three is the sneak attack, a surprise challenge for both our debaters. And to top it all off, we've got the final six. In this round, each team will have six words to make a closing case for their side. Our judge, Henry, will award one point after each round, but he'll keep his decisions top secret until the end of the debate. Okay, everybody, are you ready? Yeah. Yes. Born ready. Then it's time for the... Declaration of Greatness. Our debaters will present the most fascinating facts and awesome arguments in favor of their side. We flipped a coin, and Rachel, you're up first. It's time for a declaration of greatness that'll make us all delight in the smelly glory of skunks. Imagine it is 1634, and you're in Paris, so it's this huge city in France. There are no cars, no electricity, but more importantly, there are no toilets. If you need to pee in the middle of the night, you pee in a bucket, and then you open the window and throw it in the street. There are also no showers, and there's no deodorant, which becomes particularly apparent when you decide to embark on an adventure to the New World. Because to get to the New World, you have to ride on a ship with a bunch of salty sailors who are definitely not wasting any of the boat's limited fresh water on baths. So when you finally reach the New World, to you it smells amazing. Sparkling clear rivers, the scent of pine forests. But then one day, you smell something you have never smelled before. Something that is more foul than anything back in stinky old Paris. It is so stinking and casts so foul an odor. No sewer ever smelled so bad. This is a description written in 1634 by a missionary who took that journey from the stinky old world to new France, part of what we now call Quebec. I would not have believed it if I had not smelled it myself. Your heart almost fails when you approach the animal. Welcome to the new world, buddy. And may I introduce you to the skunk. There are no native skunks in Europe, so these black creatures with two white stripes down their backs were new to Europeans. But Native Americans and First Nation folks have been dealing with these stinky boys for a long time. Our word skunk is actually borrowed from the Algonquin. Skunk comes from a word that means pea fox. According to Algonquin legend, we should be grateful that skunks are only about the size of a house cat. Because the story goes that one day, two brothers were paddling down a river in their canoe when they realized... Hey, we're near where that big skunk roams. The big skunk could shoot his stinky skunk spray across the ocean. So he has kind of a reputation. One of the brothers is like, Yeah, let's get him. This is my whole thing. I kill dangerous and large animals, and the big skunk is both. So they work up this plan. One brother sharpens a stick. You know, so I can plug up the skunk's stinky shooter. And the other brother says, I'll smoke my pipe to make big clouds of smoke so the big skunk can't see us. And then when they get to the part of the river where the big skunk typically pounces on his victims, I'll jump out of the cloud of smoke and pierce the skunk. But he doesn't kill him. And the other brother's like, Dude, why did you let the big skunk live? I just wanted to make him small enough so that people could use him without getting hurt. You know, his pelt is pretty beautiful and there's some good meat on there. So from now on, skunks won't be giant, they'll be small and have just enough power in their spray to protect themselves. And boy, can they protect themselves. First, skunks give you a warning. The tail goes up, they give it a shake, they stomp their feet, they might even do a handstand. And then they turn and look at their butts as if to say, do you know what this thing can do? I am warning you, pal. But if all else fails and the skunk can't get away, they're pretty terrible at running, the skunk will fire. The stuff that makes the stink is thiol. That's a chemical compound that has sulfur as its main ingredient, so you might know that as rotten egg smell. Skunks can spray their blasters five to six times at once, up to 10 feet, and the smell is so foul that you can smell it from a half a mile away. And it has the power to temporarily blind some predators. And if a skunk isn't able to directly spray their attacker, they can make a cloud that the predator has to run through. That's what you get for messing with a skunk. So that's all the why not about skunks, why you should not mess with these black and white baddies. But here is the why of skunks, why you should all be stamping your feet and doing handstands to get a spot on Team Skunk. 
Skunks are tough little forest foragers. They will eat anything. We're talking bugs. We're talking spiders. We're talking toads, frogs, lizards, snakes, mice, chipmunks, eggs, plants, and pests. Farmers actually kind of like skunks because they gobble up the kinds of grubs and grasshoppers that farmers hate. In 1894, farmers in New York actually pushed for a law to protect skunks because they were so helpful with their hop crops. Plus, skunks are nocturnal, so they do all their eating at night while the rest of us are asleep. So could these guys be any better eaters? You bet, because skunks eat bees. If you've got a hive in your home, send in a skunk, because they don't even care if they get stung while they're eating them. And finally, I'm going to leave you with the words of scientist Charles Darwin upon encountering his first skunk. Conscious of its power, it roams by day about the open plain and fears neither dog nor man. If a dog is urged to the attack, its courage is instantly checked by a few drops of the fetid oil, which brings on violent sickness and running at the nose. Certain it is that every animal most willingly makes room for the skunk. And so I invite you to make room in your heart for the skunk. Ooh, a very <laughs> rousing argument for Team Skunk. Henry, what did you think about Rachel's Declaration of Greatness? What stood out to you? I like how you said that they give a warning, like they're more polite than just like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to spray you because you came near me. Yeah, if you get sprayed by a skunk, it kind of sounds like it's your own fault. Yeah. I want to see them do a handstand really bad. That sounds awesome. Well, Wendy, it is time for your rebuttal. Give us your best shark attack. You've got 30 seconds and... All right, so skunks sound like they just eat a bunch of garbage. You say, like, that's great, but I'm just hearing, like, munching garbage machines over here. Farty, munchy garbage machines. (laughs) It all reminded me of a a great tale, Henry, that my dad told me. It's not a tale so much as a life lesson. (laughs) If you don't love the smell of your own farts, you can't really love yourself. (laughs) And, you know, that's what I'm thinking about through all of this. And time. (laughs) (laughs) It's an unconventional rebuttal. Uh, But just as a reminder, Wendy, we feel you should point out that skunks don't fart. They actually spray a smelly liquid from glands near their rear ends. But a very useful lesson for all of us. Wendy, it is your turn. We want to know why sharks are the coolest creatures in the animal kingdom. All right. Well, Henry, you said that you knew about Jaws. And in fact, what a lot of people have heard about sharks comes from films. In fact, the very first blockbuster film involving sharks was the 1975 film Jaws. It is as if God created the devil and gave him Jaws. Well, forget all that, because it's time for the truth about sharks. The whole tooth and nothing but the tooth. Do you get it? Because some sharks have big teeth. <laughs> We're going to get to that, just to say. First, some fun shark facts. There are, in fact, hundreds of different shark species out there. Like, there's one called the shy shark, and it has eyes like a cat. My personal favourite is a shark called the wobbygong. It means shaggy beard in Australian Aboriginal. Got that shaggy beard, and it got that name because these sharks look like these beautiful swimming carpets. Okay, that's the wobbygong. But, of course, the shark that inspires legends the Great White. And that is the shark that Jaws is based on. And these sharks are huge. There's a reason that they're called great. And these sharks hunt their prey in these crazy, cool ways. So the Great White will often start by diving deep down into the water and they're looking up and they're looking up for a silhouette, a silhouette of their favourite prey. Your mum. Okay, joking, joking, joking. Seriously, seriously, joking. They're not looking after your mum. They're not after your mum or looking after your mum. They are often looking for a seal. Okay, and when they see that silhouette of a seal, the shark starts barreling through the water because if a seal spots them, 
no dinner for Sharky. Now, scientists have found that with a couple of flicks of the tail, they can go from a cruising speed of about one mile an hour to 25 miles an hour. And they can move so fast because over millions of years, sharks have evolved all these things called adaptations that help them move through the water. Like even their skin has these tiny little bumps that create little whirlpools in the water to reduce friction. Surfer dudette, whoa, please. Whoa. Thank you. Now, When a shark gets close enough to their prey to protect their eyes from a seal fighting back, great whites will actually roll their eyes back so at that point they are basically blind. And then the shark will clamp down their teeth and their teeth truly are super duper scary. Here's how shark scientist Taylor Chappell from Stanford explained it to us. The teeth on the bottom of the jaw are sort of like like fork tines. And then the top teeth are those really iconic white shark teeth that they're big triangular and they're serrated to sort of move back and forth in order to cut down through that prey. Wow. So it really is like when you like grab a steak with the fork and then you like cut a little piece with a serrated knife. Like that is the shark's mouth. Yeah, that's that's what they're doing, which is. That's pretty cool. Yes, great whites basically have a set of flatware in their mouths. And seals don't just have these scary teeth to worry about. Great whites have these powerful muscles around their jaw, which scientists have estimated gives them one of the strongest bite forces in the animal queendom. Now, People say that great whites can smell a drop of blood in an Olympic-sized swimming pool, but that's actually not true. Great whites are actually more visual predators. We think they use their eyes more than their schnozzers. Okay, now, I know what you're thinking. Sharks are the best thing in the world. They're so much better than skunks. But also, you're probably thinking they're scary. Well, here's some good news. You don't need to be scared of sharks. Why? Because you're not a seal. And sharks in the vast, 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 vast majority of cases don't like to bite people. Get this. Scientists in Australia, the US and South Africa have seen great white sharks and bull sharks swimming near hundreds of people and they just don't go after them. Yeah, people hardly ever get bitten by sharks. Like each year, millions of people hit the beach and yet only about 60 to 100 people ever get bitten by sharks worldwide. And on average, only six people are killed. Like six, what's that? Anyway, here's what shark researcher Taylor had to say about it. You're way more likely to be, you know, have a TV fall on you and die. You know, not very many people are terrified of walking past their televisions. So to find out why sharks don't like eating people, we at Science Versus, the podcast I work for, and you should totally listen to Shameless Plug Ahoy, thought that we should ask a shark why they don't like eating people. So, hey, Justin Bieber. Justin? I was just wondering why you didn't like eating people. Is it too late now to say, sorry, I can't understand what you're saying? Uh, All right, so we couldn't get answers from Justin. But uh, then when we asked the next best thing, scientists, they told us that the reason that sharks don't like eating people is because for millions of years, sharks have been eating marine animals, not people. And so great whites and other sharks probably evolved to prefer the taste and feel of fish and seals and sea lions. They don't like eating us. Given all this, why are people scared of sharks? Well, they have bad PR. I mean, Shark Week, you know, that yearly TV event when scary shark videos are all over Discovery Channel. Hello? News of the man-eating Great White shakes nerves across Australia. Shark Week, more like Shark Week. Like, sh- like with an E and an A, like like weakling, get it? Yeah. Anyway, another researcher, Dr. Chris Pepinef, who's at the University of Sydney, told us that... Sharks have been demonized. And when I do my musical, Flaws the Musical, it's going to be, you know, like Wicked. It's going to be like Wicked. And, the sh- the, you know, the, e- the shark is going to be the star of the 
musical. Now, Chris is still writing his musical, so my amazing producer, Rose Rimler, and I, we recently got together and we wrote a song for our podcast, Science Versus, to write this wrong. Here it is, our version of Wicked. I know you people are scared of me, but I'm not the one to blame. You saw Jaws as a child, and now you think I maim. But I need to eat sometimes, and even if you're on the beach, I'll choose a seal for food. But human flesh, it's just not my cup of tea, so I won't pull you down. <clears throat> Sharky, I find that hard to believe. Dolphinda, haven't you been listening to anything? You really don't want to eat humans. No, I just want to bite humanity, or maybe a seal. But human flesh, it's really just not what I'm into. So I won't pull you down. Wow. That is our first fully produced musical number on Smash Boom Best. So, Henry, what did you think about that very musical declaration of greatness? Well, first of all, I'm flattered you wrote a song for me. (laughs) And they evolved over millions of years to just not like eating humans. That's convenient. Yeah, it is. Well, Rachel... I know you have some things to say, so you have 30 seconds for your rebuttal. Why do sharks stink? And your time starts now. First of all, I'd like to apologize to all of the seals and manatees in the Smash Boom Best audience. It seems that Wendy's truly discounted their feelings. Second of all, I want to say that there's a lot that my opponent is hiding about shark biology. So... Sharks are also scavengers, much like skunks. They are attracted to the chemicals in the intestinal systems of their prey, which means that they like to hang out around sewage outlets so that they can eat poop. Oh, what? Also, this is a lot of game talked about these shark teeth. But did you know that shark teeth are only attached to their gums, not their jaws? (laughs) (laughs) All right, Henry, we've heard a lot. Sharks, yeah. skunks, so much to take into account, but it's time to award your first point. And remember, we're asking you to judge based on one simple thing, which is cooler. Don't tell us which side you're going with, but mark it down when you're ready. Difficult decision, but I think I know who I'm going to put the point with. So you've decided? Yes. Well, we're going to take a short break. You can have a baby seal snack or nibble on some bugs because you'll need your energy. We'll be right back with more Smash Boom Best. You're watching State of Debate, home to rage and rhetoric and awe-inspiring argumentation. Taylor Lincoln here with 16-time debate champ Todd Douglas. Greetings, debate heads. I just caught a real stunner of debate on tape. Two classical DJs were arguing about which composer is better, Beethoven or Mozart. Beethoven, obviously. I'm way more into Mozart. Because you were a child prodigy, too? No, because I like the music better. Sure. You can't fool me, Taylor the Talented Lincoln. I just wish I could hold a tune. Roll tape. Listen to this, DJ Bass. Mozart's Eine Kleine Nacht music. Isn't it just gorgeous? Mozart is the best classical composer. No, no, no. I respect your opinions, DJ Treble, but I still think Beethoven is the best. Yeah, but Mozart was a child prodigy. He started composing at age five. Yes, but Beethoven composed some of his best works deaf, meaning he couldn't even hear them, and they still ruled. Ever heard of the Ninth Symphony? I want you to imagine how awful it must have felt to go deaf, to lose the one asset you needed for your life's work, and then to go on composing despite it all? To hear all those beautiful sounds in your head, to feel the music in your bones. Now that is genius. 
That DJ is sharp. Ooh. He's using a great debate tactic, something we like to call an emotional hook. An emotional hook is when you connect with your audience's feelings and make them empathize with your argument. I don't agree with DJ Bass, but he did make me feel really bad for Beethoven. I know, but remember, debate heads, you always have to support your emotional hooks with facts, too. Exactly. Facts plus emotion make very strong arguments. Like, for example, Mozart only lived until he was 35 and he still managed to compose 600 works of music. Yeesh, here we go again with the child prodigies. It's well, not because tune we were in child next time prodigies. for ah. some major debate tips on State, State of, of Debate. debate. Best. Ooh. Smash. Smash. Boom. Best. You're listening to Smash Boom Best. I'm your host, Molly Bloom. And I'm your judge, Henry. One of my favorite things about this show is all the amazing debate ideas we get from listeners like you. Blake from Washington, D.C. sent us this awesome idea. Bart versus Burps. We're going to check back with Blake at the end of this episode to see which side he thinks should win. And now it's back to our debate of the day. Sharks versus skunks. That's right. And it's time for round two. Micro round. For this challenge, we asked our debaters to imagine their side, either a shark or a skunk, as an advice columnist, and then write a response to this reader's dilemma. Dear debater, Every day after school, I catch up on some reading under my favorite oak tree in the park. Its sturdy trunk and leafy boughs are my one refuge. But lately, a flock of chickens have been beating me to it. They never shut up, and they're always laying eggs in inconvenient places. I've tried to find a compromise, but they're very rude and unwilling to negotiate a tree-sharing schedule. Please help. Sincerely, fed up with these foul fowl. All right, Rachel went first last time. So, Wendy, let's hear your razor-toothed response to this pleading reader. All right, here we go. Well, fed up with these foul fouls, um, I'm very sorry to hear about your terrible predicament as a shark. I don't actually have to deal with chickens. It's really great uh, because I'm just in the water all the time. Uh, But I did call up my very wise shark friend, Ruth Bader Finsberg, and she's going to arbitrate on this. Now, most people would think that her shark advice would be eat the chickens. But honestly, we're not that into chickens like all those feathers. Anyway, now, as great whites, we prefer seals. So here's what Ruth told me. She said that when chickens are unwilling to negotiate, there's only one thing for it. You have to sit on them, just right on them, and then you have to pretend to read. Now, chickens being chickens, they will squawk and squeak, but just don't mind that. You just pretend you're reading. The chickens will get bored, they'll get uncomfortable, and then they'll move on. And hopefully you'll get to rule the roost. (laughs) Excellent advice, Team Shark. Okay, Rachel, let's hear your skunky advice for fed up with these foul fowls. Dear fed up, what a rude brood. Now, you might think I'd recommend putting up a stink the next time these hens are in the hood, but we're not certain whether chickens have enough of a sense of smell to be off-put by an odor. So if these fowl are running afoul of common courtesy, then it looks like to make this omelet, you're going to have to crack a few eggs. And actually, speaking of omelets, skunks love to sneak a raw egg out of the nest and into their mouths. So I say next time these chickens come a-clucking, be like a skunk and pluck a couple of eggs right in front of them. Seeing you laying into what they've laid, should be enough of a deterrent to keep them off your turf. That's basically the way of the skunk. Our reputations tend to precede us. So much so that animals that really ought to see skunks as a delightful dinner, like badgers and wolves, generally have no interest in catching a noseful. They're scared of the very idea of what we might do. So grab a bite in front of these bossy birds and watch their appetite for your perfect park perch disappear. Excellent advice for our fed up with foul fowls. Henry, what stood out to you in those advice columns? I feel like both ones would be a really good way to just show your dominance over the chickens. (laughs) I think sitting on them would be a very effective strategy. (laughs) Or stealing their eggs, I feel like that's also a very good way because you could very much steal them, they get mad, and chase you away. Both good options. It's hard to choose, but it's time to award a point. So don't tell us who you're voting for. Listeners, you too award a point for this micro round. Henry, have you decided? Yes, I think I have. 
He has. Awesome. And it's time for our third round, the super stealthy <laughs> sneak attack. Our sneak attack is Animal Cast. Write a short, catchy trailer for a podcast hosted by your side. Be sure to include information like the name of the show, your animal host's name, any guests, your release date, and why listeners should tune in. It will give you a few minutes to work. And while you're brainstorming, we're going to listen to some lovely hold music. Ancient predators of the deep, razor sharp rows of scary teeth, bloodthirsty great white, get away from me. Cute French tuxedo dude, did you just fart? My gosh, how rude! Watch for the white stripe prancing through the dark. All right, Rachel, let's hear Team Skunk's podcast. Hey, listeners, if you like Smash Boom best, we think you'll love Think Before You Stink, the skunk's guide to confrontation and how to avoid it. I'm your host, Titus Mephitis, and we'll tackle how to talk it out or stamp your feet or do a handstand or scurry up a tree or dig a hole. All of the strategies that can help you avoid causing a stink. Find Think Before You Stink near the garbage cans, by the cat food and the compost heap or wherever you listen. (laughs) <laughs> I would subscribe. For sure. All right, Wendy, it's your turn. Let's hear about Bloodthirsty Team Sharks podcast. Have you ever wondered which animals are misunderstood? Like dolphins, are they really that sweet? Orcas, free willy, more like deadly beasts. And finally, tuna. What's up with them? Well, there'll be no canned <laughs> laughter in this podcast. You should listen to Shark Shack. Every week with your host, Nikki Finage. Excellent work, both of you. Henry, think about which podcast trailer wowed you the most. Which podcast would you tune into? Give that team a point. But don't tell us which one you voted for. Listeners at home, you two award a point for this sneak attack challenge. Henry, have you decided? Yes. Excellent. All right. It's time for our last round. The final six. Wendy, you're up. You've got just six words to make a final impression on Henry here. Let's hear them. Knife set in mouth. Wobby gong. Very nicely done. And now, Rachel, your turn. Let's hear your last six words. Glorious, omnivorous, nocturnal, black and white. Hmm. All right. Henry. We've taken a fantastic trip around the animal kingdom today, from the coastal waters of Australia to the North American woodlands. Both teams have put up a tremendous fight, but it's time to award our final point and crown one of these fearsome and fascinating creatures the Smash Boom Best. All right, I have awarded my final point. All right, drum roll, please. And the winner is... It was actually a tie. <laughs> Can you walk us through your thinking a little bit, Henry? Well, I thought that there were a lot more facts and a song with the Declaration of Greatness yes. for Sharks. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then I gl- kind of liked the Skunk's Micro Round a little okay. bit more. And then it was really tough to pick between the um, the podcasts. Yeah. But I ended up going with the Skunks. Okay. And then for the final six, I chose... Sharks, because Wobbegong. Wobbegong. It's a good word. It's a very interesting (laughs) shark. But there are no ties here on Smash Boom Best, so we have a tie-breaking round. It's time for... Sudden Death. All right, Rachel and Wendy, are you ready for your Sudden Death Challenge? Never been more ready. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. The challenge is sandwich art. We want you to make up a sandwich inspired by your side. What would the ingredients be and why did you choose them? Does it have a name? Make us hungry. Wendy went first last time. So, Rachel, you're up. Tell us about your sandwich. So, I'm taking two pieces of dark, dark, dark rye bread, and I'm going to toast them. And then I'm going to spread cream cheese on each piece of bread. And then I'm going to take a hard-boiled egg, and I'm going to slice it up. And then I'm going to lay the slices of egg on one of the pieces of bread and then put them together. And then you are going to have 
a basically black sandwich with two stripes of white to represent the beautiful skunk. That sounds delicious. It's like a, a spin on an egg salad sandwich. Um, so maybe I'm going to call it um, the chicken buster <laughs> in honor of my win in the micro round. Smart. Smart move. All right, Wendy, let's hear about your Sharktastic sandwich. All right. So you might have expected that it would be some kind of fish-based sandwich, but obviously I'm not a cannibal, so I don't recommend you eat my brethren. Instead, I've decided that the key ingredient in my sandwich is a skunk. (gasps) This is outrageous. Chop it up. Fry it up real good. (laughs) Add some salt. Add some pepper. You kill that thing fast, it won't even fart on you at all. (laughs) I heard that it tastes like chickens, just like those foul fowls that we heard about. (laughs) Add some tangy tomatoes, a little bit of lettuce, and top it up with some great white bread. Does your sandwich have a name? It's called Skunky McSkunk. (laughs) It is time to award a point for this sudden death challenge. I I think I know who I'm going to go with. All right, Henry, who gets your final point? I'm going to have to give it to sharks. Yes! It made me laugh quite a bit, but also I thought the skunk sandwich was pretty smart, too. And that's it for today's debate battle. Smash Boom Best is brought to you by Brains On and American Public Media. It's produced by Mark Sanchez, Sandin Totten, Molly Bloom, Elissa Dudley, and Rosie DuPont. We had engineering help from John Miller and Zach Schmidt. And we had production help from Manica Wilhelm, Christina Lopez, and Lauren D. Brenna Everson is the voice of our hold music, and our announcer is Marley Feuerworker Otto. We want to give a special thanks to Justin Koo, Austin Cross, Taylor Kaufman, Max Nesterak, Eric Ringham, and Jed Kim. Wendy, is there anyone you want to thank today? Uh, I want to thank my team and particularly Rose Rimler, who produced our episode on sharks and helped me out with a lot of this info. And how about you, Rachel? Any special shout outs? I'd like to thank all of our champions. Those are our Chompers listeners, as well as the champions who make Chompers and the team at Smash Boom Best. Do you want to give any special thanks, Henry? Oh, I'd like to thank my dad for driving me here and then my brother for being my brother and my mom for being awesome. Oh, And before we go, let's hear who Blake thinks would win in a Farts vs. Burps showdown. I don't know who will win. Blake can't make up his mind, but what do you think? We'll be back with a new debate battle next week. Farewell. Ta-ta! Farts are so much fun. I mean, you can crop dust someone. Oh. You know, you walk past, you just do a fart. Right. Bear trap them, get them in the lift, fart, walk out. I mean, with a burp, what can you do?